Praise the Lord and good evening, everyone. Great to be in the house of the Lord on another Lenten service, last Sunday of March. I seem to sense that we're all worn out about winter. And I find on television even the weather people are worn out over winter right now. Uh, So we'll blame them. But it's great to be in the house of the Lord tonight. Um, Jim Byerly sends his uh, regrets. Uh, He had an accident last night in his automobile, and uh, miraculously, uh, God was good and uh, protected him. Uh, Kathy's here tonight, if you'd like to see the uh, aftermath photos, but we give God the praise because God truly is uh, with us, and it damaged the automobile well beyond repair, and he's just banged up. So I told him that we would, I would relay that, and we'll give God the praise for that, that he's just uh, banged up and probably more pride banged up than anything else. Uh, but uh, we're glad tonight, and I know Kathy's glad, and we rejoice with them uh, that no worse than just a banged-up automobile uh, happened. So again, we greet you tonight on behalf of Rockdale United Methodist Church. Uh, Easter's coming. Just hang in there just a few more weeks, and we're going to get sun, and we're going to get warm, and if we don't, we're sure going to find somebody to blame it on. All right? So let us pray. Almighty God and Heavenly Father, we thank you tonight for the manifest and manifold mercies you've given unto us. We give you the praise for watching over Jim, Lord, in his accident, and we just thank you for taking care of him and delivering him safe to his family. And Lord, I thank you for everyone tonight that has come out. Let them receive a blessing of the Lord throughout this service and also throughout the Lenten season. Thank you for everyone that's participating tonight, whether they're uh, a congregants or whether they're part of the service. Just let us all receive a wonderful blessing as we look to you, Lord, uh, for all of our comfort, for all of our strength, and all of our joy. And we anticipate a wonderful Easter Sunday, Lord, where we celebrate the resurrection of our Savior. And as we look forward to our soon gathering together with him and to be reunited with all of our loved ones and family and friends, Lord. It's the hope that Christianity gives to the world that no one else has, the hope of a risen Savior and life in Christ Jesus our Lord. And bless everyone tonight in Jesus' name. And let's say it together, amen. Good evening. I'm going to ask you this evening if you would stand as we begin our service tonight for our call to worship. I'm going to ask you to remain standing uh, through the hymn that we're going to sing. Our call to worship is up on on the screen or you can look in 754 in your hymn book. This is a very familiar passage. It should be. It's the 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Leads me beside still waters, restores my life. Even though I walk through the valley, darkest valley, I fear no evil. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord as long as I live. And again, the hymn, if you'd like to look in the hymn book, it is on page 504 or up on the projector as well. Sit 
as we prepare for Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day and everything you've done. We ask that you continue to bless those who give so freely and bless those who will receive. We ask all these things in your mighty and your holy name, and we all say, Amen. Tonight, Brookville's choir is going to uh, sing several numbers for you tonight, and I know you'll be blessed. Mary Alice Helm.
Scripture lesson for this living service is found in Ephesians 5, 8 through 14. And Paul writes, For once you were full of darkness, but now you have light from the Lord. So live as people of the light. For this light within you produces only what is good and right and true. Carefully determine what pleases the Lord. Take no part in the worthless deeds of evil and darkness. Instead, expose them. It is shameful even to talk about the things that ungodly people do in secret. But their evil intentions will be exposed when the light shines on them. For the light makes everything visible. This is why it is said, Awake, O sleeper, rise up from the dead, and Christ will give you light. Does anybody mind if I come down here? Does this thing work? Is this thing on? Hello? Testing? I got this thing on. Greg is super dark on this corner, right? Hello? Hello? We can hear you. Okay, good. Yeah, my 30 years of being on stage, I can project my voice. I just like to move around, you know, kind of meet people in the eye. No, it's red. <laughs> Hang on, no, it lost. There we go. Okay, good. 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 We all, uh, I think a lot of us here are parents. We see some uh, little beautiful baby right there. How are you? I was waving at her earlier, and she was waving back just gorgeous. I became a grandparent last Monday. I love it. Greatest, or two Mondays ago. Yeah, on the 17th. Greatest thing ever happened. Whenever you're a grandparent, you know what I'm talking about. I get to, I haven't changed one diaper. Um, no, I haven't. Or have I been woken up in the middle of the night and she and her boyfriend live with me until the end of the week. So it's, it's incredible. I get to hold her, love on her, and then when she changes, needs change, she goes back to her mother. I love it. But in really, really holding her for the first time, I kept reflecting about what it was like when I was a parent for the first time, or even when I was a child. And all the things that my mom used to tell me uh, that everything would be okay. Everything will be fine. Don't worry too much about anything. But one of the things that my mom used to always tell me when I was a kid, a lot when I was a kid. Maybe you haven't been told this, but I was told this a lot. My mom would always tell me, you need to act like you've got some sense. <laughs> you ever heard this? See, I picked on Greg Pepper this morning over at Mount Carmel. He heard it a lot. A whole lot. So did Jeff over there, Jeff Merrill. Heard it a lot. We've all heard. We've all heard. You gotta act like you've got some sense. Behave yourself. Act like you've got some upbringing. Who's heard that? We've all, and we've all heard that stuff before. We all have. I, I, I like this, this scripture lesson because it kind of reminds me sort of like that when I was younger. And it sort of reminds me maybe what God's doing now. God said, or Paul wrote Ephesians, For once you were full of darkness, but now you have the light of the Lord. So live as people of the light. Basically what Paul's saying is that act like you're saved. Act like you have been, been forgiven from Jesus Christ. Act like you have experienced his love and grace. Act like you are of his blood, not of a human being. Act like you're saved. Be people of the light. Act like people of the light. You can tell a Christian. You can tell a non-Christian. Isn't it amazing during this time of year now all these God movies are coming out? But if you dig underneath the surface, is it really a God movie just because they call it Noah and slap a flood into it? I mean, I'm, I'm afraid to go see it. <laughs> afraid to be disappointed. But nonetheless, the bottom line is act like you have God in your life. life. Be the people of the light. We are redeemed. All of us have been redeemed. If we've accepted Jesus Christ into our hearts and we've professed with our mouths that he is our Savior, we have been redeemed. We are different. All things Paul writes is new. We need to accept that and be people of the light. But what pleases the Lord? One part of the scripture says, carefully determine what pleases the Lord. What pleases the Lord? I mean, I can rack my head. What pleases the Lord? Obviously, coming to church, being a good person, you know, all those good things. That pleases the Lord. Deuteronomy 10, 12. And now, Israel, what does the Lord your God require of you? He requires only that you fear the Lord your God and live in a way that pleases Him and love Him and serve Him with all of your heart and soul. 
To love your God with all of your heart and soul is what pleases God. That's one of the very simple things that pleases God. Jesus backed this up when he said in Matthew 22, 37 through 39, when he said, you must love your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment, and the second is equally important. Love yourself as your neighbor. And of course, you remember the question that was asked after that, well, who is my neighbor? Well, you're my neighbor. We may not live next door to each other, but you're my neighbor. So is the atheist down the street. They're my neighbor too. You know why? Because I need to be the people of the light to them. You know why? Because some, somebody was a people of the light to me, or I wouldn't be here now. You see, I wasn't born in church. I didn't go to church as a kid. I believed that, well, well I followed the philosophy that my mom led. Only hypocrites go to church. We don't really need to go. We're good people. We just read our Bible and move on. I didn't know Jesus Christ, who he was personally. I may have picked him out in a diagram or on a wall, but I did not know him personally. You have to have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, or otherwise you're just sitting in empty pews. Got to have a relation. It is a relationship. That's it more than anything. So having a relationship, obviously, is something that's good for God. Pleasing to God, having that personal relationship. That's why Jesus came on this earth, to reconcile us to him. Don't take part in worthless deeds or evil and darkness. So what is the worthless deeds that Paul's talking about? Well, here's just a few. Obviously, we can think of a couple. Curtis, we can think of a few right now. I mean, murder, you don't want to kill anybody. How many of you have ever sinned and talked about your sin and thought, well, at least I didn't kill anybody? I mean, all sin is going to get us away from God, right? And get us into hell, no matter if it's murder or lying. It's all bad. Ecclesiastes 10, 7. Happy is the land whose king is a noble leader and whose leader feast at the proper time to gain strength for their work, not to get drunk. Maybe getting drunk is not something that is good. You're not there getting liquored up. You know, if you saw me and Curtis out at the, the restaurant, we're all getting, you know, we're throwing a few back. That's not going to look good. Would it? No? I mean, or Janet, she's out there with us, and we're having a good time. We're just throwing her back. Even if we said it's not alcoholic, it still looks bad. Can't look bad either. Don't want to look bad either. That may not look good. Luke 21, 34. Watch out. Don't let your hearts be dulled by carousing and drunkenness. Don't let your hearts be dulled by carousing and drunkenness. And by the worries of this life, don't let that day catch you unaware. Worrying, dude. Worrying. This morning I was preaching at Mount Carmel and I kind of moved around. I don't know if you guys noticed it. And I thought, oh, I felt kind of a twinge in my back. I go to Wickham and I'm standing there. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm really tightening up. I'm kind of, kind of doing this a lot, you know. And I told Steve Rock, I said, boy, my back's hurting. It's hurt from here to here. Well, there's where your appendix are. I was like, oh, I'm fine. I think it's just a, you know, kind of feel bad. And he goes, no, mine exploded. <laughs> My appendix exploded, man. I'm telling you. And I'm sitting there. I'm sitting there, What? I said, well, when you have a fever, when you be puking, I had no signs that my appendix exploded, man. And there I'm like, oh. So then I started thinking, well, five minutes ago I was preaching about not worrying. Here he is having me paranoid. I'm going to go to the emergency room. You know, I'm sitting there panicking. Oh, my gosh. Thank God a little, little, little uh, biofreeze helped out. And I'm, I'm fine. <laughs> but... Man, oh man, I said, they're panicking. Don't worry. And what happens if it is an appendicitis attack? You know, one good thing I try to do is think of the positive side. Maybe I would lose weight. Who knows? But all I know is we wouldn't eat for a couple days probably. Maybe you got you to not worry about anything. And we do. We worry. You got a little baby over there. You're never going to stop worrying. It's just the way it is. You know? You're just the way it is. You're never going to stop worrying. But we can't let our worry dominate us where we just can't enjoy the blessings that God gives us. Because no matter where you are in life, guess what? You're blessed. And he has blessed you. I am the most miserable, blessed person on the planet where I used to be. Until I realized that, you know what? i got to be happy where I'm at. And if I look around closely, God has blessed me. He may have told me, no, Garth Brooks has, Garth Brooks has it wrong. There is answer prayers, everyone, and sometimes it's no. I don't know if you guys know that or not. I know he says no to me a whole lot. Yeah, I mean, one of that $400 million power bar, Curtis? Nope. Can't have it. I'd like to have it, but I can't. So don't worry about anything. Don't let things dull you. 
And you know, as Christians, we get caught up in the world. We're human beings. It's natural for us to, you know, be hanging out with our friends and, you know, we just forget where we're at. And we have you ever been with a group of people and then all of a sudden out of the blue, you you go home and you think, man, I probably did some things I'm ashamed of. And you want to go take a shower? You just feel like you want to scrub everything off. I don't know, I've done that. Where you think, man, I, I probably behaved wrong or said some of the wrong things or, or maybe, I don't know. You've got you to be people of the light all the time. It's shameful, Paul writes, to even talk about the evil deeds others do. Does anybody have this happen? Or we have somebody that worked on it, do you? Do you have people at work where you look at somebody and, and you see them coming and you're like, I, there's a lady at work that I grab my phone and I start pretending like I'm talking. Because <laughs> this woman will start gossiping about everybody and everything and I just don't want to hear it. We all have people that, it's like at, at work maybe. And they want to gossip and it's like, oh my gosh. And then sometimes you kind of walk by and you, what was that? So and so did what? You got to not do that. We can't get caught up in... Is that why you lean over here and someone heard? Do you do it? Yeah, no, no. She's like, wait, you do it, honey, stop! <laughs> it happens. Yeah, I, I embarrassed Maria. I was talking about Maria, the thing she did, woman drives like a maniac. Yeah, but that's not gossip, that's truth. That's truth. You know, I, I've had the one with the speeding ticket. She's never had one. It's amazing. Dangers of gossiping. Don't even gossip. That's not pleasing to God. Yeah, I can't either. Yeah, I mean, it, you just can't get involved in gossiping. But it's easy to. It sure is. Psalm 41.6, They visit me as if they were my friends. But all the while they gather gossip, and when they leave, they spread it everywhere. That's what gossipers do. It's not true. I mean, not, you know. This lady works here right for the National Enquirer. But again, we all remember back in the 80s, Back in the 80s, when the height of the tele, televangelist, the, the height of the televangelist, Jimmy Swagger, Earl Roberts, all those guys. And what happened? Their light was exposed on them, right? We all know what happened. And a lot of time what that did is, unfortunately, that gave fuel to the unbelieving world of, I'm fine, I don't need to go to church. If Jimmy claims to be righteous, and look what he did, I don't need to go to church. I'm better than Jimmy. No, that's just God exposing. He's weeding out. We're like bonsai trees, folks. God needs to cut us, cut things out of our lives. And sometimes it may be family members that he needs to move away from us or friends or whomever or people who are false prophets. He'll cut them out so that we may have a personal relationship with him that's unfiltered, that's pure, purified by his grace and his blood and his love. The light will expose on the, on the darkness. And we all have secrets. Every one of us in this room have secrets. You may have a secret from your spouse. Who knows? But God knows and as long as you're not holding on to that secret and living a lie, I think it's all right to have a secret, maybe. But one day, be rest assured, it will come out and we will face our maker because nothing, nothing that we do will go unexposed. Nothing. We'll meet God one day. And I may fool every one of you guys, but I'm not fooling him. Not one bit. Not one bit. Not that I am. I'm... I'm what you see is what you get. Un, un, perfect and all. And I'm not perfect. That's true, Doc. I'm not. Believe it or not, I'm not perfect. <laughs> for everything, Jesus says in Mark 4, 22, for everything that is hidden will eventually be brought into the open and every secret will be brought to light. There's no sense in holding anything in. No sense in holding any secrets in. Give them all to God. Especially if there are secrets that are going to hold us down. Secret secrets to keep us from God. Give them to God. Give all of your junk to God. He wants it all. He wants it all. Everything He wants. He doesn't want you to hold anything back. Even if you feel like, I, I, I can't talk to God right now. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw a few four-letter words out. Give Him those too. Let Him have it. Don't hold them in. That's just that's junk that's going to pollute your heart. Curtis, am I right? It's going to pollute your heart. Give it to God. Give everything to Him. That's what He wants to do. How many of us... When we change our baby's diaper, do we just leave them, leave them sitting there? No. We clean them up. God wants to clean us up. Give him everything. The biggest secret is yet to come, and that's when Jesus Christ 
will return. That's the biggest secret. He doesn't even know when he's going to return. Only the Father knows. That's the biggest secret. We need to be. I finally got this thing fixed, and I'm done. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Well, I just want to, uh, you know, admire my, my Wickham family and my Mount Carmel family. There's Wickham over there too, because they heard this already this morning. So thank you guys for not slipping into a coma during this. I appreciate it very much. The food smells good, but let's end on this. Let's end on this. This is the season of Lent. It's to remind us of the temptation that Jesus went through where he overcame all temptation by having a personal relationship with God, by holding on to God, by quoting scripture when he had to. A lot of times in our lives when we give up things for Lent, what happens on the day after, after Easter? We pick them right back up again. And that may be fine. You want to eat a candy bar? Go eat a candy bar. But you know what? Let your relationship be even stronger and continue to be strong. Today is March 30th. We still should be, we still should be in the spirit of Christmas. Today. And on July 5th, when it's 100,000 degrees, I can't wait. But still, be in the Lenten spirit. Every day, we need to continue to work on our relationship with Jesus Christ. Not just during seasons but every day so we can be more close like him. Because as Ford said last week, this is a dark world and it's getting darker each and every day and we are the people of the light. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I just ask you to continue to be with us and guide us as we continue to be people of the light, as we continue to shine your light that you've planted into our hearts and plant your seed so that way those who may not see will one day be able to see. I ask you to continue to be with us as we get to uh, enter this time of fellowship. And I just ask you to continue to bless us as we enter another work week. I ask you to be with us in everything that we do. And I say all these things in your mighty and your holy name. And we all say, Amen. with us tonight and through this week and let us take to heart what we heard and just shine your light out no matter where we are this week let us just find a place to shine that light and and lord just bless someone and tell them about christ we ask that you bless this food we're about to eat in jesus name amen <laughs>